Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Maniac Science Labs. I am Mr. Andy, and today we're going to have some fun with rocketry. Yes, absolutely. It's going to be great. In fact, we're going to have fun with water bottle rocketry. Very simple, very fun, easy to do with stuff you have at home. So just to get started, let's go ahead and talk about the supplies that we're going to need. Just uh, let me preface this by saying this is not an experiment you're going to be able to do with me at the same time, but I mean you could, it's possible, but it's more likely <clears throat> you'll want to watch the experiment and then take the information you receive so you can do it on your own time afterwards. So don't worry if you don't have everything ready to go, just watch the video, I'll show you what to do, and then when you're finished you can gather your supplies, build your launch platform and have fun shooting water bottle rockets. Uh, so first thing you need is a water bottle. Simple, ordinary, plastic water bottle. I recommend a 12 to 16 ounce bottle of water. Um, you can go bigger, but the bigger you go, gets a little more dangerous. So let's start small, and then if you feel like you wanna go bigger, go bigger afterwards, okay? We're gonna start with a 12 ounce water bottle. That's the first thing you need. You also need a wine cork. Um, ask around, I'm sure somebody's got one they can give you. Uh, some people save these just for crafts. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna need a wine cork and you need to cut it about in half. Now the most important thing about the wine cork is you're probably gonna want real cork, not the fake cork that they have out now. It's kind of plastic. Because real cork expands and you want your cork to fit nice and tightly into your water bottle. If you go to enter it, you, can, can you hear that sound? Hear that squeak? That is a tight seal happening. That is very important. So make sure whatever cork you use is gonna fit the mouth on your water bottle really snug. Uh, you'll need a knife so you can trim the cork and I'll show you in a second why that is. You're gonna have to use a basketball needle. I don't know if you can see this. I'll bring it a little closer. It's just ordinary basketball needle that fits on a bicycle pump. The needle part goes inside the basketball. There's a little hole in the side to inflate it. There's a little hole in the tip of the needle that, push, that pushes the air into the basketball. We're going to use a similar concept with these wine corks. What you're going to do is take your needle and push it through the cork so that little hole is sticking through the other end of the cork. So when you put that into the bottle, Oh, I did it backwards. There's always a skinnier end of the cork. So when you put the cork into the bottle, like so, that needle is poking into the bottle. That will allow you to pressurize the bottle with air. Now the last thing you're going to need for your rocket <clears throat> is the bicycle pump, which you will take and you will attach to the needle and then you can use that to pump up your bottle. Now I'm only gonna do it like one pump because I don't want this thing to shoot off and hit the ceiling and bounce off the needle. Just, you can hear that. Did you hear that exhaust? Let's do that one more time. That's the pressurized gas leaving the bottle. Here we go. That's what we're gonna do. It's so cool. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. I haven't even told you what's happening yet. Uh, to build your platform, this is where it gets tricky. You're going to need a platform to aim your rocket. There are thousands of videos on the internet that will show you thousands of ways that you can build a platform. We're going to do the most simple, easy to do, five minute build using scraps of lumber that may or may not be in your shed or garage. Okay, first of all, you're going to want two pieces of deck board or something similar. If you have plank, that's fine too. I happen to have some old deck board lying around. I salvage wood. I, whenever I take something off of something, if it's potentially usable, I throw it in the back of the garage and forget about it for 10 years until I finally find a use for it. Today I found a use for it, this old deck board. You're gonna cut this into about 12 inch segments, two of them. If you have, you know, one by four plank, does the same thing. You're gonna need a couple two by fours, about 12 inches in length, approximately. 
you can redesign yours as you see fit after you've built the first one, or at least started putting it together. I'm sure some of you engineers out there have way better ideas, but literally we're going for quick and simple. So 12 inch measurements just to keep it simple. And it's usually most people have pieces of wood that short lying around, uh, just scraps that you can use. You're gonna need a little bit of a, I call this a one by two, but I don't think that's right. It's smaller than that. But basically a little bit of trim board because what you're gonna do is take two little segments of this to have something for your bottle to rest on, like that, on the launch pad. That way the bottle is held in place, but you have access below it to attach the nozzle from your bicycle pump, okay? So that's basically what you need for your, uh, for your building of your platform. If you have extra pieces of two by four laying around, have those handy. Because once you build your platform, you can use those to adjust the pitch. So you can, if, it's, if you think it's aiming too low, and the 12 foot, uh, the 12 inch legs is probably gonna put you at about a 45 degree angle, give or take. Um, so if you wanna tip it up higher to go more skyward than out, a couple two by fours propped under the legs is the easiest way to adjust that height. Now, of course, if you wanna have some extra fun with it, you can decorate your bottle. But I found decorating these is challenging because it interferes with the platform um, and getting stuff to stick to a plastic bottle <clears throat> isn't too easy. So what I'm gonna do, I got a couple action figures and I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna take a rubber band. I've got my scout trooper here. I don't think he's ever gone into space, but he likes to go fast. I'm just gonna rubber band him down. So when that rocket launches, he goes with it. Just to make it more fun. Okay. So let's get down to science. Rocketry. How do rockets work? Well, let's take a look. Here's a sample that I got off of a, uh, a website. Basic rocket. Essentially, the rocket is filled with fuel. The fuel ignites and it exhausts out the back of the rocket. That fuel converts to gas and exhausts out the back of the rocket. And what it does is it fuels, fuels there, the gas is bigger, takes up more space, is pressurized, forces its way out the back, causing thrust, which moves the rocket along. Why does that work? Why doesn't it just shoot out the back like this, just shoot out the back and the rocket not go anywhere? Well, there's this really cool guy named Sir Isaac Newton, and about 300 years ago, give or take, depending on when you watch this video, um, he wrote the third law of motion for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Write that one down and memorize it. You'll impress a science teacher someday. Third law of motion. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So, when you have your rocket filled with fuel and you ignite that fuel, converting it into gas, the gas exhausts out the hole in the back of the rocket, shooting that way. When the gas shoots that way, the rocket shoots that way. So equal and opposite reactions. Got it? Let's try that one more time. Equal and opposite reactions. Gas goes this way, rocket goes that way. They do it at the same time, equal and opposite. Newton's third law of motion. Pretty cool stuff. So a quick analogy uh, to give you a better understanding. Imagine you're, uh, I read this off of their website, uh, imagine you have a bowling ball in your hands and you're standing on a skateboard. The skateboard's on a smooth surface. You're standing still holding a bowling ball. What happens if you throw that bowling ball forward? Well, the bowling ball throws forward. You on the skateboard will go backwards. That's the third law of motion, equal and opposite reaction. I don't recommend you trying the bowling ball analogy because you're likely to fall down when that skateboard scoots out from under you. But it kind of gives you a better understanding of how this works. Equal and opposite, just like that. Okay, so the rockets we're building today, as we know, are not filled with fuel, they're filled with pressurized air. Um, with the bicycle pump, we'll be able to pressurize this air, pressurize this bottle, as much as we can until the seal is broken. 
So as we're pumping air into it, the bottle's going to inflate as it becomes pressurized. And at some point, the seal will no longer be able to contain that pressurization, and it will pop off. And when it pops off, the air inside will exhaust out the bottle, and the bottle will fly off into the air. It really is that simple. Um, the bottle itself is the fuel cell. So make sure you have a really good seal to get maximum pressure. If it's a little too loose, it's not going to do much. Um, we're also going to add water to our bottle. What happens is when the bottle is upside down on the launch platform, the water will settle at the bottom. The air will pressurize at the top. So when the seal breaks, the air will force through the water, which further restricts it and creates much more thrust. Well, not a lot more, but enough to make it more fun. Creates more thrust as the rocket flies off. It also shoots the water out the back. I have a picture here I can show you of a much larger water bottle rocket. I think you can see that. We kind of ran out of color ink today. But you can see this bottle. That stream at the bottom is water shooting out the bottle, and that's the spray of it splashing. So this is kind of a fun project to do on a very warm, sunny day, because you're going to get a little bit wet. Now, when you shoot your rocket, experiment with the levels of water in your bottle. Would 25% be good? Would 75% be good? 50%? Try it different ways. You know, maybe mark off different levels and see which one seems to work best for your bottle as far as distance and amount of water shooting out the back. Too much water, I think, will make it too heavy. It might be restricted. So you got to work to find that proper, proper balance. So basically, that's all there is to it. It really is that simple. Want to go shoot off a rocket? I do too. Oh, I didn't show you the platform. Hold on. Before we get to the rocketing, rocketing, this is the platform I built. And I apologize in advance to all you engineers out there who take great pride in your woodworking. I did not take any pride in this woodworking whatsoever. I literally took some scraps and I put them together to make a temporary rocket that I don't plan on keeping for a really long time. Basically because I'm working with what I have on hand. Now if you really enjoyed this experiment and you want to make it super fancy, you could definitely do that. There are ways to make really nice launch platforms that you'd be very proud to show to your friends. But for today's purposes, I went with what I had. And this is what I came up with. Isn't she a beauty? Yes. So these are my deck boards, two of those, 12 inches long, that I screwed together. See, I lined them up like that in a 90 degree angle and just screwed them together. There's the screws. These are my two by fours, which I attached to the top there with a couple of screws which gives me about almost a 45 degree angle, probably a little bit lower than 45 degrees. I haven't measured it to be sure. Um, and then these little guys, these are the little boards I was telling you about. Those are important, very important. Actually, probably the most important part because you need somewhere for your water bottle to rest prior to launch. And these are just enough to where you can rest it, but you still have open access to the bottom. So when you attach your bicycle pump to it, it's not going to get snagged or caught on anything. So that's the, the most important part right there. Is it pretty? No. I could probably paint it and make it prettier, but I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to have fun with it. Now, like I said earlier, if you have extra pieces of wood around, like say this angle doesn't work for you. It's going to shoot out, which is great for starters, but you want to go a little higher. Well, just get some wood, you know, a couple pieces of wood and prop it up. Now it shoots at a higher angle. So you can adjust it any way you like after that point. So now I'm going to move my launch platform over to the yard and we'll get to launching. But before we do, I do have a couple safety Reminders, we are dealing with projectiles here, so safety is paramount. I even wrote these down so I don't forget any of them. 
Here we go. Rule number one, have an adult help you with this project. No, let me take that back. Have a responsible adult help you with this project. You are launching a projectile into the air. Dangerous things can happen. It, potential for injury is there. So be careful, have somebody responsible assisting you, especially with the building process because you're going to be using some power tools. Make sure someone's there to help. Wear eye protection. Things are going to be flying, things are going to be moving. You only get two eyes in your lifetime, keep them as long as you can. Uh, when you do your launch, always aim the bottle away from you. The exhaust is going to be water and air. That won't hurt you. It kind of feels nice when it's nice and hot outside. The bottle, that can hurt. So make sure that's going away from you, not towards you, alongside you, straight up at you. Use common sense, but be careful. Make sure it flies away. Never aim your waddle bottle rocket at another person. Bad idea. Just don't do it. Um, always remain behind the launch pad during a launch. This goes for you, this goes for your friends, this goes for your assistants, and your responsible adult. If somebody is in front of the line, in front of the launch pad, do not launch. Wait until everybody is behind the launch pad, behind the person doing the launching, then go ahead and fire. Because you just it, it gets easy, especially if you have multiple launch pads going. It's very easy to have two or three of them side by side, and you're all having little races to see who can shoot theirs the farthest. A lot of fun, highly recommend it, but it's real easy if while two of you are already ready to launch, a third one misfires or whatever and runs off to get their bottle in mid-launch from the other two, that person can then get hit. Be extra careful. Don't let that happen. Uh, another one. Make sure you select a wide open area to do your launch. A big open field is by far the best plan. Um, if you have a large backyard, like I have a pretty large backyard. We're going to use my backyard. I've already tested it uh, with a gentle fire. It only goes about halfway across my yard with the small water bottle. Be extra careful. Look at it this way. Where you're going to launch your bottle would you throw a baseball in the air and whack it with a bat? Is there a car you can hit? Is there a person you can hit? Is there a building you can hit? Anything that could be hit, you want to get away from. So if possible, a large open field is definitely best. If not possible, a large backyard is ideal, at least until you get a better understanding of how far your rocket is actually going to travel. Okay. Um, lastly, when you're done, Go get the bottle. Don't leave it lying out there because littering is bad. So pick up your stuff and put it away when you're finished. All right, let's get to launch. Okay, now I've got my launch pad here ready to go. I have two water bottles that I'm going to use. I've got my uh, this guy is a scout trooper. I have no idea who this guy is, but he's from a really old space game that I had once upon a time. We'll put him aside. He's going to go second. So I've got my cork. We're going to install, install it into the end of the bottle. Nice and tight. Because we want to get a good launch off of this. Now you can see I probably have about 20% of my bottle filled with water uh, to give it a little extra oomph. So here we go. It's got the claw in there, so I'm going to set it in the pad. Ready to go. He's ready to go. I'm going to get behind the pad, because that's where you're supposed to be for safety. And I'm going to attach my bicycle pump to it. Let's see if I can move that out of the way so we can see better. So, as it starts, I'm going to go slowly here just for this first one so you can see what happens. <clears throat> As I pump the air, you can see it going through the water into the bottle. You can also kind of see the bottle inflating. It starts to get a little bigger. That was one pump, and I went kind of slow. I don't want it to fire off too quickly. So here we go. Let's do another pump. 
See if we can get all the way before it pops. All right, that thing is really swollen now and ready to blow. Here we go. And away she goes. <laughs> wow. Did you see that? My astronaut flew way farther than the bottle did. Hmm. I guess he was a bit heavier. All right, now I'm gonna reset the angle so you can see the launch itself and see just how far it's actually going to go. Okay, now that you've seen a close-up of that, so let's reset the angle a little bit. Okay, so I've got my camera adjusted a bit so you can actually see the trajectory as it goes. Um, we're gonna try one without the without the rider first, see how that goes, and then we'll do it with the rider so you can see the difference. So here we go. I've got my bicycle pump. We're going to attach the cork to the water bottle. Again, about 25% full of water. Now the cork's a little wet, so that might that might uh, compromise the seal a little bit. We'll see. Okay, we're in the launch pad, ready to go. Are you ready? I'm excited. Watch this. I like to do the first one real slow, get as much pressure in there as I can before it breaks the seal. And here we go. Oh, wow, that went way out of the camera view. Should we do that again and maybe have it a little higher? Let's see if we can adjust the camera a little higher. You lose the launch pad, but you might see more of the bottle. All right, here we go. Next bottle ready. Get it in there nice and snug on the launch pad. Here we go. Ooh, this one's going to be the one. Here we go. Whoa! That was awesome! Okay, I'm going to pause for just a second refill my water bottles, then we'll attach a rider for this one. Okay, so I've got my two water bottles. I've got my scout trooper. He's gonna go on one. Just attach him with a rubber band. Fasten your seat belts. And we've got this astronaut dude. No idea where he came from. Attach him with a rubber band so he can fasten his seatbelt. See if you can predict which one's going to travel better. The scout trooper or the astronaut? Let's find out. Scout trooper first. So, attach the cork. It's a little wet now. It gets a little messy. If you don't like messy, have a bucket of water or something nearby to rinse off with because you're definitely going to make a mess with the mud from the water spraying everywhere. Okay, Scout Trooper is set to launch. I don't know if you can see him on the pad. I don't think you can, but you're going to see him when he flies. Let's see what happens. Here we go. One pump. Two pumps. Ooh, I can hear a little air leaking. Yeah, the cork's getting wet. This is the one. He's going to go. There he goes. Oh. He flew completely off the rocket. He kept going forward, but the rocket went to the side. Probably had something to do with the, uh, the seatbelt breaking and splitting the trajectory. All right, let's try one more time with the other guy. See how it goes. But you always have to make science fun, right? Put some action figures on those rockets. Here we go. Last launch. Hold on tight, Mr. Astronaut Dude. One, two pumps. 
we gonna get a whole second pump? Oh no, there he goes! He fell off almost immediately, but the rocket kept on going. Well guys, that's another Maniac Science Labs. I hope you had a good time. I hope you learned something, and I hope you have fun playing with your water bottle rockets. We'll see you next week for more science.